everyday mindfulness at 40 Center Street, Northampton, map ID 31B-287. Um, and it was published on July 20th and 27th. And we'll start by asking the applicant to make a presentation. That would be the proxy and the architect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, so I brought some drawings. Um, well, uh, well, can I speak to this? Let's speak yeah, to I'm this. not really clear on the purpose of this. No, we, we weren't sure how, what the protocol was. So, so this is, oh, so we're just talking about the um, access ramp. Okay. So um, I'm a psychologist, and this is going to be a set of clinical offices. That, and the renovation is such that it requires the um, accessibility requirements. And so. Can I stop you for a second? Could you just state your name and address of the record? Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ruth Bolton. And uh, my business address or my home address? Um, uh, the business that we're talking about is 40 Center Street. And if you want to describe a little bit, we're mostly looking at the exterior of the building yes. and the changes that you're making. So. Yes, okay. So the um, the major change, although maybe that's a relative concept, right, but in terms of cost probably, is the ramp that's going to be on the back of what is now clearly the back of the building, but what is going to become the primary entrance for the upstairs clinical offices. So uh, there's a, a new entrance in the back uh, that includes stairs and a landing, and then the ramp is going to go on what is the right side of the building. As far as I know, the pertinent issue as far as this or is concerned to see uh, the exterior elevation so we get up here to the building on this exterior. Um, so uh, if you actually reference page 83 of uh, the small print out packets, uh, Ruth actually uh, noted every little change that we're planning on making um, pretty concisely. So. And we are reviewing all those changes, not just well, the Well, that's ramp. a question that I had. Okay. I think we're only supposed to review the ramp not the exterior changes to the structure right so if they're so for transitional residential structures which this has been classified mm -hmm. um, under your jurisdiction um, the modifications can be made but uh, without review so those changes on the exterior are not in your review okay. unless there was an expand you know an expansion of the structure um, does so that also include the windows that's right, because it's a transitional residential structure. Oh, so what's happening right now then? <laughs> it's just the ramp. And then Is the it the ramp? Is. Yeah. It's just the ramp. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's useful. So the ramp, we're, I'm, we're required to put in the ramp. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, it's not an optional thing. designed to go in the place that made the most sense for it to go in terms of access? So it's, it's a pretty straightforward um, project. And I guess if you're done with your presentation, I was going to open it up to the board for discussion. Thank you. I might add one thing. Um, if it, the elevations don't give a whole lot of context, but uh, if you're not familiar with the site, you might take a look at the um, I think it says L1, but her version of this, just to get an idea of the orientation of the building, the ramp is uh, on the back side from uh, Central Street. And um, again, if you're not familiar enough with the location, uh, that's where the Northampton Police Department building is, and then the Christian Science Church to the side. So hopefully that gives you a little more sense of context. That's all I have to add. Are there any comments from the board? Uh, my other question is, is there a minimum setback 
for that, that rear setback, because I know it's 13 and then it got reduced to seven. So uh, I didn't do the research on that. Uh, I was zero. Yeah, zero setback. Zero setback. Okay. In this, uh, so I believe the ramp is in, in its width. Right. There's a few inches to spare. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we got we got, we got a survey done, so that's something. Yeah. I would be curious about the uh, materials and color and things like that. I mean, I was looking at the drawings. I don't know if it's concrete and pipe yeah. rails or if it's wood. So it's concrete and pipe rails. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, simple, straightforward, mm -hmm. efficient. I mean, frankly, I think from my perspective, it's kind of not an issue. I mean, it's, it's required in doing yeah. something for accessibility and mm -hmm. being in the back of the building. I mean, yeah, it's slightly noticeable from Center Street, but, you know, we accept these things these days as part of living, so I, I don't have an issue with it at all. I, don't. I have one question. Um, the ramping of a switchback, and I'm wondering if there's any reason why you couldn't have done a straight run towards the uh, additional parking space. You know, you're switching it back to the straight back the ramp. Is there a gradient or something? Well, uh, if we did go straight back, we likely wouldn't have maneuvering clearance to get for the parking space at all. And then I think there's sort of the idea that most people are going to be parking. Um, towards the back of the building anyhow, so we'd rather not direct people away from what is intended to be the primary entrance. As well, it clusters the two entrances close, the uh, accessible entrance with the, uh, with the stairs, which I think is important. Oh, okay. I, for some reason, I thought that was the accessible parking spot. It's mm -hmm. a convenient spot. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite enough room to make an accessible spot, unfortunately. I'm just curious, and it's not under our purview, but are you putting an elevator in the building? I uh, know. So no, you're creating a ramp, and your offices are on the second floor. So, yeah, right. So, so we're creating an accessible office on the first floor that will be available to all of the people on the second floor on an as needed basis. The, the important thing is, we did, Ruth did get uh, an approved uh, right. variance application with the Architectural and Access Board. It's not within our purview. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. ideally, I mean, yeah. the whole building would be accessible, and yet the cost of that and oh. practicality of that is just uh, okay. yeah. Is there any further board discussion? Is there anyone from the public that would like to? No, we're all These are my people. <laughs> This is, this is team roots. <laughs> um, uh, then I'm going to close the public hearing. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Um, any further board discussion? Can I ask someone to present a motion? Motion to approve the project that's presented. I get a second. Second. All in favor? Um, that was a formality. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're all set. But it's the last formality of this nature. So it's very exciting. Thank you. Very exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you're Thank you. very efficient. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there that. wasn't too much to really <laughs> dig into there. Oh. <laughs> uh, what kind of windows you guys put in the building? Are we replacing windows? Yeah, we're planning to put uh, a good grade of vinyl window, paradigm, um, with grills between the glass, with a contoured grill between the glass. Uh -huh. So we have, we've approved this, but we're off the approval process. But the meeting is still going on. Correct. Right, the meeting is not adjourned, but you are welcome to. Thank you. Well, well, thank you all for your time coming yeah. in. Well, <laughs> sure. I, I have your own time here. <laughs> yeah, thank Good you. Luck. Thanks so much. Since the project has been approved, I would like to put in my two cents words, architect to architect, <laughs> on some of the things here that I think are inappropriate for the, the building. Uh, the, the fenestration, these double windows with the uh, mini shutters on the side, 
that it's totally inappropriate for the scale of the building. Um, you know, shutters are designed to close, to cover a window. And anytime you do something like this, you're creating a, you know, a, a suburban ranch house. Yeah, type I think it's because the shutters are there now. Yeah, we're I know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Just saying that actually. that's what it is. And you also <laughs> lost that lovely little low, um, low window that you had there that I think is a much nicer solution to the street. Uh, but again, we can't say anything about that, so I've not said anything about that. Just speaking architect to architect. Probably a lot less efficient thermally at very least. Say what? Uh, the, the pure full bay window, I'm sure, is a lot less efficient thermally. Well, and actually, it's industry. interesting to hear you say that <laughs> off the record because the, the primary architect said that we were restoring the building to its original appearance. No, well, I'm pretty sure he never said original. No, 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 he did. Also, well, no, he absolutely no, no. did. Anyway, well, well, I would bet that I, I, Chris, <laughs> I would bet that there was a single hung right below right. that. Yeah. Typically, they're and then they, yeah. they yeah. popped yeah. it out into the, the bay window a little bit later yeah. on. Yeah, I've even seen the guts and like all the different little because it's, it's a great revival time, form so. yeah. of the um, you know mid 19th century, and uh, you know it's it's just not well designed. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, we have minutes to review. Uh, we have May 11, May 24, July 13th, Cleveland Unit 3. And so just to note that the right three, that even for people who may have been absent or weren't on the board at the time, you can still accept the minutes as the record, even though you weren't okay. trying. Okay. okay. Carolyn, is that yours? No. No. Everybody, that's it might be okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. It's got all the answers in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave it stuffed up like trash. Uh -huh. <laughs> So May 11th um, was PAP housing, and I believe the New England Urban Senior right. Living Center. Okay. Um, did anyone have any comments on that? I had one comment on mine. My my my. I have a comment on my comment. <laughs> um, uh, we're packing. This is for the New England Urban Senior Living Center. Okay. And it would, was written as um, Elon Tierney selected specific guidelines. So I just wanted to change okay. that slightly and I can give you my notes. But um, Elon Tierney cited specific That's guidelines, yeah. noting that more fenestration would be required, yeah. period. And that uh, mimicking the church facade details detracts from the historic nature of the church. The Holly Street facade should be simplified to defer to the church. At least that was my intent. In that. So, um, can I get a motion to accept the, these meeting minutes as slightly altered? Second. Yes, we, we vote because we weren't there. You can. Can we abstain? I might just abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all in favor? Um, May 24th, uh, this was for um, Optical Studios and um, the uh, addition at 79 Masonic Street, which is right around the corner from this property we just talked about. Were there any comments? I just had one <laughs> grammar thing. Elon Tierney noted that the presentation had addressed, instead of was addressed, the guidelines. I again give a similar motion to accept the meetings as might be held. I'll, I'll move to accept it with your permission. Thank you. I'll second. All in favor? 
And then the last one, um, which is actually the one that I was late to um, last, our last meeting, which was um, 30 to 32 Main Street. Um, can I get a motion? Is there any kind of comments? So moved. Motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. All favor? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's it, right? Yeah. So this was in my package too, about the 30 to 32 Main Street. That was the one that, that went away last. Oh, okay. That went away last week. Okay, yeah, that's, away. that's yes. why I was confused because I didn't get it. Time for like Oh, right, okay, right, right, right. Okay, got it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I think the next hearing will be for that continuation of New England Urban Senior Living, which was September 8th or something like that. Uh, it could be 6th, actually. The church meeting. Yeah. Um, and, and if we have, yes, and then minutes. If we have any additional other permits that come, I'll probably just lump it together on that. Day. It is September 6th at 7 p.m. Okay. Now, I'm, I was curious about that project. You know, the, the, the rec tree house there is being torn down. Yep. Is there, was there no demolition review of that or anything? Did they not consider that? They're turning it down now? No, no, but oh. it will be for that project. <laughs> and that hasn't, it doesn't, that doesn't even come up in the discussion. That's right. Curious. So in the Central Business District, whenever there's a demolition approved or proposed, the jurisdiction is Central Business Architecture Committee, not the Historical Commission. So um, your, the guidance for Central Business Architecture Committee is to allow demolitions only when there's another building being proposed that adds to the street life, essentially, I'm paraphrasing. But that's the review. It's not whether or not there's a historically significant building that may be coming down, but the idea is that there's some infill piece that's replacing that building. Hmm. I don't mind it's not a classic building. I just was curious that right. they didn't even discuss that at that first meeting or mention it in terms of, I mean, it was, I guess, assumed that that had to happen in the site work, but no one came out and said this building's being taken away. Yeah. I think because they focus so much on, my guess is they were so focused so much on preserving the church that, and then putting the new building in there to, uh, you know, not to track for that. Is the church and its grounds part of the downtown Northampton National Register District, or is it outside the boundaries? I and I will go look at the boundaries again. My guess is it's outside because we expanded I'm not sure where the boundaries. The yeah. Boundaries are. Um, I don't think it encompasses that, but I'm not sure. Because that might trigger a different set of reviews depending on what the nomination, how the nomination describes the buildings, whether they're contributing to the district or not. Yeah. Can I just bring up anything for discussion sure. right now? Uh, you know, I'm a little bit biased, but I wanted to just talk about the review of the uh, Masonic Street building that Peter Frothingham came in with, you know, the old Christian Science building. Now, and I will admit I'm biased because I bid on that project, and Tiago and I were bidding it, and we came in within $1,000 of each other, and $486,000, and I was frustrated. But I was dismayed at Peter's um, presentation because it was almost no detail compared to what we generally require for all of these reviews. He didn't specify the siding clearly at all. He didn't talk about the trims. I brought up a lot of points that I was aware of because I looked at those plans, but I felt that it wasn't a good, uh, correct presentation for this committee. You know, and I, 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 that's something I I would like to bring up to the committee and, and the city perhaps is that there be a submission guideline for this because for example these drawings even though this project was minor these these drawings with handwritten notes are kind of inadequate for I don't know unprofessional yeah <laughs> um, I don't know if that's it, it, it can we do get a variety I mean sometimes we get hand sketches I think of the folks who, um, I don't remember what that little 
Oaks, that little triangular building Amber in the Ray. parking lot area. Amber Alley. Right, Amber right. Alley. Mm -hmm. It never yeah. happened. It was <laughs> happening. Slowly. Is the coffee shop, is that what that's going to be or something like that? Yeah. So but I, they came in with like, I don't even know what program they used to what, do their drawings. What we really not to scale. The drawings were not to scale. And I, what, okay. what I think we really need to see is we need to see a photograph of it as it exists. Yeah. And we need to see um, a high quality image of what it's going to look, what the same view is going to look like after it's done. And you know, the internal floor plans, you know, people often provide them. Or, that really, that's, we know, and that, th those two things are what we really need so that we can, and, and, and maybe uh, a photograph that puts it in context with the buildings on either side of it. Um, yeah, but maybe by them understanding what our, what we do, rather than, you know, providing the interior plans, that we don't need to see that stuff, mm -hmm. so that they understand what our job is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we typically don't ask for the floor plans, but ex except for it, explains you know why they're doing certain things in the exterior to a certain right. degree. Well, I, didn't, you know, I don't mind if they put yeah. them in there to support the application, but what's really important is the view of what it looks like now and the view mm -hmm. of what it's going to look like when they're finished. And uh, this, the, um, these drawings really didn't um, describe before and they, after. They didn't describe the before very well. Cause I, this, the photograph particularly at the front of the building, wasn't very, wasn't, and you couldn't really see the front of the building, there was no photograph of the back of the building. And um, um, it just, it, and the, the, the computerized drawings of what was gonna be are adequate, I think, but they weren't, I've, we've certainly seen better. Yeah, I, I mean, for, um, I will make a note of that and make sure that it's clear to applicants. It's interesting. This one, I had to really, this person, I really had to walk through and say, well, we need more details. And, you know, fourth, I had just submitted the bare minimum, and I asked for more details, and they asked, they suggested that they make notes about exactly what they're doing. I think because this was a hand railing with concrete, I didn't feel that, um, you know, I thought the notes would explain it if you had more questions about the materials that you could. And then for, just going back to the um, Peters project for Masonic Street, um, he did have photographs and then renderings for the post construction, but maybe not so much on the details of the materials. Um, so I guess it's just matching all of that. I, th I think um, I could. If I remember correctly, I could tell from the drawings, I, I had a reasonable idea of what it was going to look like when he was done, but he didn't specify materials as much as he should have. Well, basically what you need to have is a picture in with drawings and photographs of what is there and what is the context of the building. Uh, the second thing is you need to have an idea um, well thought out of what they are proposing photographs, drawings, whatever. And the third thing is that those documents have to be part of the record. We're gonna take these guys out and sue them because they put that on the front of the building instead of the back. Do you have that in the file so that you can do it? So it's really those three processes. And a lot of um, the design review, I think we're doing, and um, we, we wanna be helpful to the designer. And often they're sort of designing as they go. Very seldom do they come in and say, here are the drawings, this is what we're going to do. Um, it becomes a back and forth. And so ultimately, you would need to have a set of drawings of what it is that is better for you. Right. Or you're fine. Right. Yep. So Carolyn, is there a sort of a checklist of what the minimum requirements are for a submission? Like submit? Um, elevations at eighth inch scale or not that level of specificity but um, it's more generalized and um, but I can you know what I could do is draft up a list that yeah. we could post on the website but have you guys check make sure it's complete enough for what you want I think that would be that would probably help because we often get pushback you know, mm -hmm. I'm not ready to do that, or I don't know yet, I haven't picked that. 
but at the same time, they want to hurry up mm -hmm. and be scheduled for hearing. Mm -hmm. Do you generally so. get to see the plans prior to them making multiple copies for distribution? So that you um, can tell them sometimes, that we may need more and information? We, sometimes, and we definitely encourage that. I mean, more so, oftentimes it doesn't happen on the planning board side. They just drop plans if they think they're complete. And we need a whole lot more, and then we get pushed back. Oh my God, I got to make 25 more copies of this. You, you know, but in this case, um, I did work with the builder to tell him what we needed because there wasn't enough information, and so he hadn't made all the copies, and that's when they came back with the notes on the plans. And I said that would probably be acceptable, but I would leave it up to the committee if they wanted more. I let him know that. Um, and really it was because it was a railing and um, I thought that potentially you may you all may be comfortable with just seeing those notes. So I did leave that open for them to just move ahead with this. Um, but if that's, you know, I'm getting the sense that you prefer to have all the detail up front instead of making that judgment at the hearing. So I think probably the best thing is to come up with a list and then you guys can sign off on it and add things or what have you and then we can just post it um, in our, we have a checklist of application um, requirements. So I, can that. Yeah. I mean, I think we have to make. I'm sorry, I just think that would be great if we could have, at least there'd be some consistency in, in what we're getting and what our expectations are. I mean, this came up I think I mentioned this when the church exactly. came first came through, and I kept telling the applicants, "You need they need to know what the windows are. They need to know what they're made of. They need to know the materials." And I kept getting this back saying, "Well, we're not there yet. We haven't decided. We haven't selected." And then, well, you can't really go before the committee until you have the well, stuff. So in, in their case, I I think they were um, they were trying to get direction from us so it was worth it to them to have to go through an extra hearing so that they could put their ideas in front of us and get feedback and yeah. then go back and, and make them into something well, more but I think detailed. there's also a level which is which I think is okay because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm our whole uh, reason for being is to improve the design process for downtown property yeah. so I'm, I'm I'm okay with having more hearings on a property if, if the property owner wants to do that well, in their case, I think it provided a public venue for the, to get some reaction yeah. to the neighbors and stuff, too, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, I think you, if you schedule a workshop meeting so they don't well, there, have there their is plans a finalized. There is a technical review where all yeah. the... But let them know that this is a workshop and they will come back with the final design. Which they did do. They did the technical review before they came before us. And I did describe to them what they needed to bring, okay. and they didn't bring it. So okay. that's that's what's frustrating yeah. is that you have that kind of workshop and say this is what our expectations are, and then they don't provide it. And while I agree that we're here to help um, builders and designers meet the guidelines, I also um, feel like they need to submit a minimum amount of information for us to do that. If there's something on the table that's for discussion, but let them know that it is for discussion, that they're not likely to walk out and put the building through. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a definitely a, tr it's a fine line oh. to walk because you're in a permit review, right. and so you can't have sort of an informal discussion, so maybe it opens the process that there's no guarantee that they can walk out with a permit that they may have to be continued or what have you. So well, I think that was their expectation when they did. When, when, I don't think they were expecting us to approve a, uh, their design in that area. Right. And I think that was because we had been telling them all along that <laughs> we <laughs> more detail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we didn't want them to go away surprised if they didn't get a permit after with such little detail. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they come back. Right. So I have a question like about all the paperwork and everything. So once something is approved, do you keep your, all of the documents or do you get rid of them? Or do you 
do it as I know they'll be everything online or somehow they'll Yeah, be you don't need to keep any of the documents. Everything is a uh, everything is officially becomes part of the public record at the city. Yeah. And they're all they're available online okay. for anybody to see them. So you don't need to so just keep my own notes if I wanted to do that, but it would be I would need to keep all this stuff. Right. And you can like if you in six months you think, oh, I want to just go back and look at the details of that project, you can just go online and pull the permits okay, and so pull the application. Even the one that we dismissed for that with prejudice last week or last month, whatever it was, we can get them to be Yeah, it's again. still, well, the application is still there because there was an action and the action was allowed withdrawal. So, the, so it stays there as a permanent submission, just the action was not a permit but a withdrawal. Okay. So that's there. Okay. Less paper, better. <laughs> I wonder too if um, do you require them to provide an electronic submission? Yes. yes. And do we can, do we have access to that prior to the? Yeah. So all of that is on. So if you notice on the um, bottom of the legal ads, we have this link. Okay. To and you get. Okay. Yeah. So if you go there, it's by map ID. So you have to do a little bit of you know digging into file. Folder, my file folder to get to that one project mm -hmm. is probably the easiest way. Just like it's, it's you know, basically an explorer um, method. Yeah, you can't but do all that on an iPad or a Mac. I found that up the hard way. Oh, really? Yeah. I've done it for my phone, but yeah. Well, I tried to, because I, I did try to do it. Maybe it was there, there was one day or two or one or two days I know that the city website it was, was down. down. So maybe it could have been that. And the system was down oh. on the last. Three weeks. Yeah. It was down for only two days, three days actually. So that may have been that time. Right. Try it. But try again. Yeah. And then, and if you guys, I mean, anytime you can email me and I can send you a, a direct link or just send you a PDF of what was submitted if you can't find it, that's no problem. Could we, could we get PDFs instead of the mail submissions or is there a rule that we have to get? No, there's no rule. I mean, we're trying to, what, um, you know, the nirvana would be that everything's no electronic and we don't send a paper copies to applicants anymore. Um, so we could do that. Um, and, to, and it would make things easier for the applicant if they didn't have to pay for you know, eight copies and the mailing costs. Right, yes. but the way, the only way we could do that is everyone's on board and everyone has access to screen or something that they can look at plans. I mean, here it's probably not, I mean, for this committee, it's probably not as difficult. Sometimes there are electronics and um, presentations, like the bigger projects would have an electronic presentation, but usually applicants, even if they're not doing electronic, they have their plans, that's because it's all about design, so they're going to have that, so you may not even feel like you have to have your own paper set in front of you. But, you know, if we can certainly move in that direction. We've had an internal staff conversation about can we start with one board at a time, sort of cutting them off from paper. <laughs> and we thought the easiest board to start with, which we haven't done yet, would be zoning board because there's so few and far between applications for them. But if I get an indication from you guys that you're ready to just <laughs> dispense with paper, we can start here. <laughs> well, you, even if you did a summary document of maybe three pieces of paper, one that shows before, one shows what's proposed, and then any written material that goes with it. Um, because they'll certainly come in with the PowerPoints, with the huge sheets of drawings. You know, I don't want to get, you know, a 20 page set of yeah, prints. I feel bad with sort of color prints. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but it, you know, if there was, you know, the minimum that we could say, oh yeah, I see what the building is. Oh, this is what they're proposing. Great. Then we'll go, we'll be prepared when they get their presentation. Uh, I, I don't think we need to have a full set of documents. If they want to do it, fine, but... And, and then you all are comfortable with looking at those online ahead of time, or...? Um, I, I would feel comfortable with looking at it online ahead of time. And I, it, it gives me a basic familiarity with what right. the um, project is, so that when we come to meet, I feel like I'm ready to see their presentation. Right. And then I would expect to see larger versions of everything in the formal presentation. My only question would be, and I don't know how, if this even occurs, but I don't have AutoCAD. Like, 
to vet Oh, yeah. They've done the PDF. Yeah, we don't, I mean, there are only a few people in the city that have AutoCAD, so we really need PDF. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but for me, on this one, just having the photograph that came through, I mean, that was enough, uh, and enough of the drawings to be able to see that, uh, to make some opinions for my off the record comments. <laughs> Well, I think if we, if, if we could come up with a draft list and maybe discuss that at the next meeting or a meeting sometime in the fall, okay. and, and we'll agree on what our expectations are for the okay. next minute. And, and, and then perhaps move to electronics. It seems like everyone's okay with an electronic submission. Okay. Might be worthwhile to sit down with Sarah and see what is required for the Historical Commission so that you don't get two divergent sets of documents, because a lot of it is basically the same. Okay. Do we need to make a motion on any of this discussion? Or, okay. <laughs> or, or I would move to adjourn. Yo, no, no, no. Is there anyone else that would like to say? I'll second it. Are we all in favor? Okay. For the good of the city, we should.